I remember back in the day when I was very young that my sister used to play Wham records all the time and that used to annoy the hell out of me because listening to Wham, that was not done right, that wasn't cool at all. But nowadays, ever since the movie Deadpool came out, it sort of is cool. Wham. No, 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 no. Wham! So, today we're gonna celebrate the music of a man that was a remarkable gifted musician and songwriter. <laughs> That's the one thing about a great artist. When you recognize who it is within an instant, that means you have something special. Now, the thing I adore the most about George Michael is absolutely his songwriting. The man wrote some fantastic songs. For example, the song Faith basically has that rhythm, that Bo Diddley rhythm, right? But Bo Diddley actually took the rhythm from Cuban music. And in Cuban music, you have the clave. It's a Cuban Latin beat. But Bo Diddley turned it into something like... And George Michael, listening to that, thought, wait a minute. Oh, well, I guess it would be nice. Huh? There you go, in one song we have the influence of Cuban music, believe it or not, and rock and roll, basically. And it doesn't stop there, because George Michael was very good at listening to other people's songs and taking some of those ideas and making it his own. For example, here's a song by The Supremes. Baby, 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 where did I love go? Ooh, huh? Motown. And what does George Michael do? Well, he writes something like this. Every day I hear a different story. People saying that you're no good for me. I... That's George Michael writing Motown. Now, you might say, well, that's almost like copying the other guy's song, right? Well, not really, because as soon as George Michael is going to sing, it's gonna sound like George Michael anyway, right? So he didn't mind nicking a good idea, but don't be fooled because George Michael could write absolutely beautiful songs. For example, most of his songs were written behind the piano and there he would write something like... much more personal lyrics and it just seemed strange to have me singing such personal lyrics ahead of this two-man group. Yeah. It really is remarkable when you think about it how gifted the man truly was. To be able to write a song as beautiful as that, that would be enough normally. But George Michael also played the bass guitar, for example, on the record. So he's producing, arranging, writing, performing. And what's interesting is is the way he worked in the studio. He was an absolute perfectionist, building the track from the ground up and telling everybody exactly what to do. For example, he would start with a very simple drum beat, something like this. Not much going on yet. But then he would add a bass guitar. Foundation. Then he would just add one guitar. And now we're getting something. 
somewhere. And then finally, just one little touch of synthesizer. Hey, sucker! <laughs> Wham! Beautiful stuff. A lover hates George Michael. One thing that cannot be denied is that the man was an absolute brilliant vocalist and also had his own style. For example, what George Michael would do was take certain words and certain syllables and accentuate it, put a bit more emotion into it as well, almost to the point of exaggeration. Somebody told me for everything she wants and everything she sees. Huh? The uh, that's typically George Michael. George Michael wouldn't sing, yeah. He would sing, yeah! No, 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 no. Wham! I think we can all agree upon that George Michael was one hell of a musician.